Hello, everyone. Good to be with you to talk about Rook Enterprise Storage for Kubernetes. I'm Travis Nielsen. I'm one of the original maintainers of the Rook project, and I work for Red Hat. Let's get going. But first, I have a question for you. Who needs storage for Kubernetes anyway? No matter how much you think your applications are stateless, you will need storage at some point. You have a database, you have other data needs. So you need storage in your own data center. You may need storage in cloud providers. Uh, you may need to overcome the shortcomings of, of cloud storage. But ultimately, what you need is consistent storage across wherever you run your Kubernetes clusters. So that's where we set out with our goals for Rook storage. First of all, we wanted the storage to be made available natively to your Kubernetes cluster, just like any other uh, storage platform. You can consume it with storage classes and PVCs and all of those standard storage mechanisms. And second, and most importantly, you can really manage Rook, your storage platform, as any other application in Kubernetes. You don't need to install it separately. It's just part of your Kubernetes cluster with operators and CRDs and deployed and configured, upgraded with the same ways that you upgrade your other applications. But storage is very important. You want to trust it. Uh, you need it to be hardened and tested. It really should be a system that's in production for years before you can trust the storage platform. So that's where Ceph is important. Ceph has been around for years and years as a stable software-defined storage solution. And what Rook did, as we said, we're going to bring Ceph into Kubernetes. Rook will manage Ceph for you and hide all the complexities of Ceph and make it simple to deploy. But Ceph itself will provide the same stable data platform and that data path that's so critical to your applications. So what does Ceph provide? There are basically three types of storage. So block storage for read, write once applications or shared file system, CephFS, for read, write many applications that need to share, share storage across their pods or object storage, which will let you uh, put and get objects to an S3 endpoint. So what environments can Rook run in? Well, really, wherever Kubernetes is deployed, you can install Rook and this storage platform. So it can run in bare metal, where you can consume raw devices or local PVs to create the storage platform. Or in cloud environments, you can also uh, consume cloud provider PVs and create this platform on top of the, the cloud provider where you can overcome li the limitations of cloud provider storage. For example, the number of PVs may be limited by the cloud provider, or the, the IOPS may be limited, or aggregating storage across AZs can be limited, but Rook overcomes all of that and more. So Rook is really production ready. We have many deployments, both upstream and downstream. Uh, there are clusters with hundreds of nodes and many petabytes of data. So there, it really has been proven in production. There are products downstream that have been built around Rook. It is production ready and has been proven for years that way. The project itself is recognized by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, the CNCF, as a graduated project since 2020. And that's really a testament to say, hey, we put the community first, we're open source, and we have a good project hygiene. We have regular releases, whether it's the quarterly minor releases or regular patch releases. And we have a, a good collection of maintainers from across different companies, uh, from Cloudical, Cybosu, Red Hat, Upbound. Uh, we're just proud of the community involvement and support we have there. There's lots more to learn. Uh, go to our website, check out the docs, join our Slack, uh, GitHub, and, and see you on Twitter. And we'll have lots more of these videos coming on how to use Rook. Have a good one. Bye.